Hello everyone and welcome to Day and Night Cycles in our Unity Survival Game series done by Brackies. I am the CEO of Brackies and this is video number 22 in which we are going to cover again uh, making the skyboxes blend, uh, implementing a day-night cycle in that the light will change both the direction and the intensity and we will have both a moon and a sun uh, orbit across the sky. Um, so that's going to be really, really awesome. So uh, in this video, we are not going to create the script ourselves. And uh, we're not going to create the different assets either. But I will help you understand on, uh, first of all, how to implement these things and make it uh, really nice and also give it in, giving it your own touch and uh, also helping you understand how some of these techniques actually work. So again, this is a beginner's tutorial, so I won't go too much in depth, uh, but that's what game making is about. If I had to type out every single script I used um, for different pro uh, projects, I would never ever get anything done because sometimes you just have to reuse things. Cool. So as always, I've opened up Unity and uh, let me just give you a quick demo of what we are going to be making. So uh, I've fired up a scene here and when I start out, it's night time and I have set uh, up the speed a bit and you can see the moon there going down and light starts to come on and now we should see the sun rising there. So the light gets really red and as the sun gets higher up we will see the light being more and more intense and as it starts going down again it shifts back to the reddish uh, tint and now the intensity should start going away and the moon rises in the other side of the map and so uh, this will just loop into infinity and we can change the point of day with this slider in the left hand corner uh, for testing purposes we are going to leave it here uh, for quite a while so it's really nice to have both so we can quickly see uh, what time of the day it is um, not only by looking up and uh, also so that we can change out the environment and feel and different models in different uh, lighting so cool let's hit stop playing and uh, now this dnc i'll just keep the seen there if there's something we need to cross reference but this is just what i used for the day night cycle uh, preview here um, we are gonna go ahead and just take the advanced ai the respawn menu and the player stats all v2 version 2 and just drag them under the scripts folder because we're not going to be uh, needing that and then we're going to take this day and night cycles uh, folder which i have just made and we can just go ahead and delete that and actually let's just go ahead and delete this scene also and now we can open up our usual main scene and we are back so um you will notice that here uh, there is a test folder lying here and this is just because i'm testing out some mechanics with some arms in which we are going to implement later and once we have them in place we will also start taking a look at stuff like um picking up weapons and so but that's it in the future for now let's go ahead and see how you can implement this day night cycle all right so if we go to the desktop here um the uh the things you'll need will be included in our survival assets pack which you can again download from our website and uh, we have a bonus video if you don't know how to extract them and use them. So once you have extracted, extracted them, you should see them here. And if we double click, there will be a Unity package file um, called Day Night Cycle. And you can just go ahead and simply take this, drag it into Unity, into the project pane, release, and then hit import. And this won't do anything to your project other than import one folder called day night cycle there we have it so it won't mess anything up don't worry and there won't be placed files all over it there will just be a new folder in the assets called day night cycle 
Now we can go ahead and implement the uh, most important part of this day night cycle with which is the prefab called time of day or Todd. So if we open up our Todd folder and, uh, and th uh, four things will appear with a material folder, which you don't need to uh, change. This just contains the different sky boxes and uh, some properties that will allow them to blend. This contains a shader, which will help with just that. So this will help um, uh, transition, fade and blend the sky boxes together. And since um, shading is completely new, I won't explain exactly how this works. Uh, then we have the time of day script, which you are, of course, uh, fully allowed to change. Just play around with it and uh, make it how you want to be. And then we have the actual prefab. And uh, for now, the image here is just the moon, but uh, it also has a sun in it and so on. This is just because I made the moon a child object of the sun, but you'll see how everything works in just a minute. So if we first of all go ahead and drag this into our hierarchy, we can see that uh, the lighting on the maze starts changing. And uh, we could go ahead and disable the directional light we have completely, though this would make everything but uh, the lamp here completely dark at night time. And I still want to allow some lighting there. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the intensity to something like 0 0.05, maybe even less than that. We'll just go with this for now. And uh, one very neat feature that Unity announced in their um, in their Unite keynote speech um, is that di uh, directional light shadows, real time shadows, will be uh, free very soon. So we can ha start having some real time shadows. But until then, <laughs> let's again move on with the tutorial. Um, so under here, if we click our time of day prefab, we can see we have the time of day script. And this script will do many things for us. If we just go ahead and hit play as is, you can see that our skybox is really looking weird. So right now it should be night, but uh, we just have these clouds and yeah, this is not what we want. So what you want to do is you want to select our player, then go down to our uh, main camera and delete the skybox component because everything will be handed through our time of day script. And so we could also go ahead and boost the lighting of this, make it a little more realistic sky kind of color. So I would go with something like that. And now when we hit play, you can see that th this looks a lot, lot smoother and um, it fits the time of day better. So again, select the time of day prefab. And uh, if we hit play, you can see that the slider here slowly goes up and will eventually reach one, and then it will start looping. The slider two will uh, follow it upwards. And then at a certain point, which is 0 0.5, it will start to decrease again. The hour is what uh, is the hour of the day. So this will go up to 25 at uh, four and then it will loop back back to zero. We have the sun, which is just the directional light that um, actually emits the light down on the scene. So this is just a, a light game object. Then we have the speed. So if we change this to like 10, you can see everything changing really fast. Or if we change it to something more realistic, like, I don't know, 2000, you can see it going really slowly. So I recommend that you choose a number when we're done testing out uh, at about, I don't know, 600 would be good. Because then it won't change all the time. Uh, but again, you won't get stuck in just the dark fall and... Uh, you you don't you don't know what to do because it's dark and you're scared and <laughs> whatever. Um, kidding, but yeah, six hundred is pretty much a good amount. All right, and below the speed we have all kinds of different color settings, 
And I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, the fog is like the mist. The uh, morning, uh, so we have a different kind of fog colors. We have the night, dusk, morning, midday. Uh, then we have the ambient light. Um, and all of these are just tint properties. So these will just determine uh, the, uh, the color of it and uh, the feeling. Then we have the ambient light, which is the light that is going to be spread all over the scene. And instead of having this directional light at, at just a low intensity, we could go ahead and disable that and then just boost the night ambient light. Uh, though I think having a directional light improves the experience. And so we have the uh, night tint, the dusk tint, and so on. Then we have the two skybox materials, um, which we have in there. And then we have the sun night and the sun day just the overall feeling of these two. So um, all of these properties will be set at a pretty good uh, property already when you just import it. Maybe except for the speed, that is something you'll have to play around with your, on your own. Under our time of day prefab, we have the sun. And if we just go into our scene view and hit F, actually there we have it so that's our sun so if we go ahead and boost the speed a bit to something like 50 uh, we should be able to see it start rotating let's see if we can get it to rotate For some reason, it's not updating. Maybe, yeah, there we go. So you can see the actual rotating of the object. And if we zoom out even more, you can see that the moon goes around as well. So there we have the moon. Um, so that's how it works. And remember, when it, it's pointing this way, the light is emitting from up here. So that that's it. So this will always be projecting light right at the moon. Okay, cool. And by parenting this moon uh, to the uh, directional light, we'll just make sure that it's always in sync with the sun, which is made by the skyboxes and the flare. And uh, the moon itself is not that exciting. So if I just stop that and zoom in on the moon, it's just a small sphere with a mesh renderer where I have made a material that is set to self-illuminated diffuse and a basic texture uh, to wrap around it. So that's how everything is pieced together. Now let's take a look at the time of day script. So double click it to open it up in Mano Develop. And inside of here, we have uh, a lot of variables, um, but we have already went over the, these. Uh, everything is handled in the function on GUI because uh, we are basing this on a slider, the one in the left hand corner. I've added a couple of things to make this work better. And uh, one of them is that if the slider is less than or, e or, or more than or equal to one, uh, set it to zero and so this will just repeat so every property like time of day hour slider two and so on is based off this slider value and and therefore you can control everything with just that slider so let's just quickly go with the most important parts of this code so we have the GUI slider here and you can go ahead and resize and do whatever you want with that then we have the hour and time of day, which are set using the slider and the slider two. Then we have the sun uh, that rotates. Then we have uh, some. Uh, then we have the movement of this of the slider um, using the speed variable and making sure that it doesn't change depending on the frame rate. Then we have the uh, color looping, so that the sun will uh, change its colors. Then we have um, then then we we set some more values for the slider two. Then we have the sun intensity that will change depending on the slider two. 
And all of these variables, uh, these numbers here, you can go in and just change them and play around with them. So if you think that the uh, sun is too bright at uh, as overall of just a daytime, you can go under and find the sun intensity. And then maybe say, let's time it with 1.4 or 3 instead, so that it won't be just as powerful. Then we have the, uh, if time of day is less than 4, then it is night. So the time of day is used to determine uh, what, um, what time is it? it is inside of the code here. And so if it's night, uh, we can have... Uh, we have the skybox being the skybox material one and we set the skybox to float blend and then then the, so they will fade together uh, we tinted adjust the ambient light adjust the fog color and uh, so on and uh, we do this uh, depending on these different if statements so uh, a cool thing that you could do with this is you could go in and uh, make a GUI element uh, called our GUI, for example, and just have it uh, sit in a, a corner and display what hour it is so that the player knows just what time of day it is. Um, you could also just have him orient uh, using the position of the moon and or the sun. So if you want to go ahead and adjust the different tint values, so the different uh, tinting of, uh, of stuff like ambient light, I suggest you go ahead and change the speed to something like 100 here. Um, and then you wait for the time of day. Actually, it might be an even better idea to just set it really high. So it almost wasn't, uh, won't change. And you can set the time you want to adjust using the slider so I'm going to set it to night and uh, now I can just go ahead and adjust and see how it changes so I could take for example the night ambient and play around with that and when I have something I think works remember that when you're in play mode um, and then and then cancel out all of these cha uh, changes will go back to normal so you might want to take and write down the slider values here, so the R RGB. That is pretty much it for today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.